hang on with you. We'll start with that 11 seed there. Just a uh, an entertaining night of ball. A uh, couple of curveballs, no doubt about it. But we have an Elite Eight set, folks, and it is on the table. And right off the top, if you are watching live, I'm going to give this to you right now if you are unaware of the tip times. Both games on Sunday that were determined by Friday night Sweet 16 matchups are going to be on CBS at 2.20 Eastern. Oh, there's a voice crack. Okay, let's have a show, Chip Patterson. We're going to have one seed Purdue versus two seed Tennessee. That's obviously coming out of the Midwest with Andrew Catalan, Steve Lapis, and Evan Washburn. That's going to be your 220 tip on CBS. And then 505, the last game to decide the final four, emanating from Dallas, Texas on CBS. You know it. Ian Eagle, Bill Raftery, Grant Hill, Tracy Wolfson, four seed Duke. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say it again. Come on, come on, come on. Just, just. Just, just lay it in. Come on. This is on America's most watched network. This is on um, the network of stars. This is where are these schools from? Tell me again, Matt Norlander. Yeah, from the Atlantic Coast Conference, the network of DJ Burns. It is ACC. By the way, Chip, feel free. I don't have my board. You can lock in any single sound you want. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, at any single time, we are going to start right here, right now. Everyone in the live chat, appreciate you. Nada, let's toss a poll question up there, by the way, as well. Um, give me, give me, uh, so let's look at the final four right now. We got, okay, how about this one for the poll question, Nada? Drop it in there. We'll say, which lower seeded team do you give the best chance to win in the Elite Eight? So with Ooh. that, we've got Illinois, we've mm -hmm. got Clemson, we've got Tennessee, and we've got State. Tennessee's going to win that one. So, you know what, Nada? Don't put Tennessee in. We'll go Clemson, Illinois, and State, which are the three lower-seeded teams there. And then we'll get to those results later. Let's go right now. NC State, we are obviously leading on the darling of this tournament, still sticking around, beating second-seeded Marquette in the first tip of Friday night, 67-58. I've got thoughts. I've got nuggets. I'm not going to go any further. I've talked a ton to start this pod. We are going right to the heart of the celebration in North Carolina, Chip Patterson, thoughts, experiences, give me anything and everything you got on your Wolfpack getting this done and making their first Elite Eight since 1986. Yeah. W what happened when I scared you? Did, <laughs> did, did, did I jump in and say that? Yes. Did, yeah, yeah. I said this was the reverse of the curse, right? You know, I yeah. said it was done. I said, that's it. Chris Corciani got called for the travel against Georgetown, and that was the beginning, and this is the end. All right, so, um, yeah, I was at the Rialto. Shout out to Hayes Permar. Um, you know, old school theater, downtown Raleigh. and it, You've got that Big Star shirt on. Like, Big That's Star, right. star might have played at Rialto. Seriously. That's right, baby. <laughs> it was panic. It was anxiety. You know, like, it, it was waiting for things to go bad because that is what has been most of the NC State athletic experience. But listen, I saw with Kevin Keats so much confidence, and that's something that is both uh, equally inspiring and also frustrating because you were like, okay, why did it take so long? But at the same time, they are dialed in. Like hey, Casey Morsell dialed in. O'Connell dialed in. Um, everybody around this team understands their roles. Mo Diara, who do you realize, Matt, that they got a little bit hosed because he has to wait another hour to be able to eat? <laughs> I'm aware. I am aware. Yes. Right. I mean, Ramadan. It's just, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. The, the Ramadan fasting going into this, which is you know we see it with the NCAA tournament every single year with those who observe, but you know. The fact that NC State, I thought, to me, held the upper hand uh, through and through. It was it was just something that was uh, very, very impressive. Marquette was chasing. Marquette was chasing the game the entire time, and that mm -hmm. is not what you expect when you see an 11 against a 2. You know, this is a, a, a weekend where we had 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2 in every single bracket. But what did we see last night? The one and the two did not hold serve. What did we see tonight? The one and the two mostly held serve, but uh, NC State being the exception. We have eight teams left in this tournament. Three of them originate from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Clemson, Duke. We will get to the Blue Devils, of course, and the NC State Wolfpack. So, yeah, I mentioned 86 the last time NC State broke through this far. Shouts to Vinny Del Negro, Nate McMillan, and Charles Shackerford. 
that were on that team, coached by the one and the only Jim Valvano. It is uh, it's a heck of a story, man. This is this is awesome stuff. It really is. It, I mean, Marquette. I'll get to them in a second. I was surprised by uh, by the performance, by the lack of urgency. NC State wanted it more from the jump, and they controlled. Right? They, they had it. They did. I was yeah. I was genuinely surprised, Chip. I did not think I. I didn't put it out of my mind that NC State could win the game, uh, but I did not. Th- We've had a couple of these bad boys now in, in the past 48 hours where a team on the on the wrong end of a result. Um, I give credit to the other team for winning, but I was uh, you would have thought that Marquette played a, a triple overtime game the day before. It was just it was weird. You'd agree, right? Oh, without a doubt. The fact that Marquette did not have juice was surprising, but at the same time, when in this tournament outside of what second half against Western Kentucky, like maybe first half against Colorado. I don't think Marquette's had its best stuff. I mean, Tyler Kolek came back. So like in terms of a math equation, you would be like, okay, Tyler Kolek's back. Marquette's going to be back to its full self. I, I would not say that I saw 40 minutes with Tyler Kolek back in the lineup, right? I thought the Marquette was as good as it was, let's say on January 10th. Yeah, um, it uh, was surprising. And they basically were only able to roll six guys out there. Chase Ross came off the bench. <clears throat> uh, Marquette finishes at just 0.84 points per possession, was four of 31 from three point range. Four of 31. Folks, that's 13% overall. And, you know, Cam Jones gave you 20. Tyler Cole. Uh, that, that would be GP's little homie from Memphis. It would be his little homie from Memphis, but uh, but booted out of this tournament. Kolek at 17. There was a shot afterward of Kolek walking down the hallway. Jersey ripped in half out of pure frustration. And I get it, man. If you're Marquette fans, you are pissed because this was a good team. You did break through to the second weekend, but you had that two next to your name in this bracket. Seed expectation, you get to an Elite Eight, and that has not happened two years in a row. It is frustrating. You've got other fan bases that are right there joining with you, but uh, – but yeah, if you're Tennessee, we'll get to you later. You're the only two that's still standing in this in this field in this tournament. Uh, it, it it is a tough one, and it was a tough night for the for the Big East. How about NC State though? Won four straight games against ranked opponents. Um, that's the longest streak for the program since 1985 when it won five straight. And what's wild is is going on this this run here. With the, dating back to the the win over Louisville in the ACC tournament when it was trailing at the half. And how they have tapped into, uh, in my in my opinion now with this, no matter what happens again on, on Sunday against Duke, whether it's a 30-point win, a, a, a one-point buzzer-beating victory, or a 30-point loss, the NC State story is, a, is, is guaranteed to be a top five, if not better, defining story of this tournament. Mm. And the power of it, and this is just, this is, this is awesome stuff. It really, really, really is. NC State, Chip, has held its past five opponents under 40% from the field. They haven't done that in eight seasons, and to do it against NCAA tournament competition is incredible. Um, the, I mentioned the uh, the Marquette shooting display from three point range, four of thirty one. It's the second worst uh, with a minimum of thirty attempts, and that's a ton of attempts. But it's the second worst percentage by a team in the tournament in the history of the event. Um, you got, I don't know what to say, man. Other than you just got a, a really, really incredible performance out of NC State, and. The fact that it comes on the 50-year anniversary of these two teams meeting in the 74 National Championship. Mm-hmm. There's, just, there's a lot of really good stuff here. There, there really is. If you're curious about the worst three-point shooting performance, by the way, that was Kentucky in 2010. It was four of 32, so just barely worse than that. But, uh, but yeah, just in, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly uh, impressive by the Wolfpack getting that, uh, getting that done. And continuing a trend for Marquette where it is – seated well in the tournament and then losing to worst seated teams. It's been, it's been, you know, it's become something of a trope there for them. Uh, they were a two, they lose to NC state this year. They were a two. They lost to seven seed of Michigan state last year in 2022. Uh, it was a toss up nine, eight, nine, eight game, whatever. But before that 2019, they were a five. They lost to 12 seed Murray state. I was at that game. Um, they were a three in 2012. They lost to seven seed Florida. So, um, it's tough. It's tough living there for Marquette. Um, I still think the program is going to be just fine under Shaka Smart, but special team, Tyler Kolick, second team All-American, couldn't get it done. Any other outstanding thoughts on on what you saw go down here on either end of the aisle, Chip? Yeah, fair or not. It, the fact that I'm going to think about you know Marquette at Illinois, right? 
you know, Illinois breaks through first sweet 16 since 2005. What'd you do? <laughs> okay. You capitalized Marquette Shaka smart. You had what? Six straight losses in the round of 64. Was that or five straight in the round of 64, six straight losses without advancing to the sweet yeah. 16. Yeah. Like, ah, and this is what happens. You know, it, I just feel like for NC State, and and I was watching the game, um, you know, watching the game with a lot of NC State fans, and they were super, extremely superstitious. Like, <laughs> like here, look at me, extremely superstitious. Like I had to check in with multiple friends to be like, okay, can I come sit with you during the second half? No, yes, no, yes. You know, you, you had you had to balance it all, but there was so much confidence. You were up by thirteen at halftime. Right. And in the whole second half, you're only worried about blowing it. You're not having to beg for a comeback. NC State owned this game. They I owned credit, it. I, I credit they Kevin Keats. Owned like, it. Yeah. You know what? Let's give Keats his love in that staff. This is phenomenal. Ridiculous turnaround for this team, man. Really. Like you, you had to look at the fact that, okay, all right, you're going to get. Tyler Kolek, Oso Iguodaro, the pick and roll game. We're going to try to isolate DJ Burns. You know, we're going to try to create all these mismatches. And, and yet, NC State just answered the bell. And I was so impressed by the Wolfpack with that. I, you know, we'll get to what happens next in a yeah. little bit. But for this game, you know, you spent seven wins in 12 days. You come back, you get the adulation, you're on campus, everything like, is is rocking and rolling, and then you show up with another strong performance. Just yeah, I it one of the great stories of this NCAA tournament, like you mentioned, is the fact that Kevin Keats starts against Louisville, and you're like, I don't know what's gonna happen at NC State. Yeah, I'm not talking to agents, you're talking to agents, you know, like. I had to just before the ACC tournament, I had to just check and make a few calls, be like, because I don't know, I don't know, and it was it was in the air and he was safe by the time they even made, you know, the semis, in my opinion. But this is, <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I texted Brinson, our buddy Will Brinson, shouts to the Pick Six podcast. I said lifetime contract for, for Keats. <laughs> He's just he was on he was on cloud nine. Shout, credit to Will Brinson. So. Wait, hold on. You you know I was with him, right? Oh, uh, he did not indicate. So he did not tonight. Oh yeah, he, yeah, he did not indicate. So yeah, yeah. So all right. So first half is like still going on during bedtime, right? Yeah. So like I, I you know we're we're trying to get every, we're trying to get the boys to bed and then I, I run up to the theater uh, shout out to Hayes Permar the Rialto downtown Raleigh like I I catch up with Will Brinson and a couple other NC State grads and uh, they're uh, that that was what I saw was that they were like I I don't I don't think we're supposed to have this we're not supposed to have nice yeah. things you yeah. know and, and your Marquette didn't. Didn't have the goods. Uh, just wild, wild stuff here from the Wolfpack. But you know, they've got a uh, they've got a familiar foe. Coming they up do. The, uh, I will. Uh, we'll get a quick little yeah. look ahead on that at the end of the show here. Um, a quick note though, Mohamed Diara just going for 15 boards, 11 points. He was the most important player on the floor. DJ Burns going for four points, four rebounds, seven assists. I'm not going to say he was used as a decoy, but. Well, he's been good at passing out of the double team. No doubt. All, no like, doubt. Like, that's his thing. It's yes. like the – I saw one scout uh, send a message that was like, um, why did it take them so long to realize that he is an elite passer out of the double team? Four out, one in. Yeah. But you needed O'Connell to be reliable. You needed Diara to be reliable. So, you know, I'm not I'm not going to – I'm not going to – slam the coaching staff at that point no yeah no it's uh impressive stuff nc state fans relish this a big night women's team also advanced big night all around for nc state hoops that's uh that's awesome 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 stuff we will just give you a quick little taste of the look ahead uh later in the show but first we got to get to the team that nc state's going to play and what it did knocking off the top seed right there out of the south that's obviously duke 